Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us, O Lord. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is another God. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. This is the thesis we'll be uh, uh, using for this study today in Mark 13. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So that's what we're taking into the study. And now we're looking at, uh, this is a review from last week. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. Notice a widow is a person that is free to marry. Now, Mary, who you say? Another, another man, and that would be Jesus. Okay, now the law teaches us this. Paul tells us this. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that, it, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So this is a picture here of that. This woman is totally committed now to Jesus Christ. And how do we know that? Because, look what he says, for all they have cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. So she's given her life to this. The people give up their po a portion of their abundance, but here we're told that she gave everything, her life. And that the Lord uh, considers that hallowed, or and that's how you worship Him when you when you do ev you do everything for Him. Uh, you subject yourself. I was just talking with Hosanna out there in the hallway. We were talking about uh, being subject one to another. This uh, uh, point here, and uh, that's what the Lord wants. Now, so He just uh, He's been in the temple. You know, this is Tuesday. As he went out of the temple, some of his disciples said unto him, saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones, what these buildings are here, and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's gone out of the temple. We're told he's leaving the temple. And this is because he's been rejected. And this is a story for us as well. If you reject the Lord, he's a gentleman. He will leave. And like his dad does here, he leaves. But remember, look at this. Stones and one stone left upon another. They rejected the cornerstone. If you reject the cornerstone, guess what's going to happen to the whole building? It's going to crumble. And that's what he says here. You reject the cornerstone, no matter what, how important this, because the disciples had heard how, how hard he was on the Pharisees, on the Sadducees, on the scribes. He was hard on them. And so they were kind of thinking that maybe the Lord was too hard on them. And he's, he, they're trying to find something good. So they say, look at the building. Isn't that an amazing building, this structure? And by the way, that building there, that's a picture of a model that's in Jerusalem. I took that picture in 98. Um, I took a picture of the whole city. I mean, I just walked around it. Here I'm combining the city, the model with the real city. Way in the back, you can see the real city. See these great buildings, large stones? He says, they, they, there shall not be not one left upon another. Now look at this. In the Old Testament, this happened as well. In Jeremiah 7, 3, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. 
the people had gotten so bad, oppressive to the poor and, and just evil. And the Lord says, you need to correct your ways. And they says, nothing will happen to us because the temple of the Lord is here. The temple of the Lord will safeguard us. And God, and God says, no, it won't. Because guess what happened to that temple? Babylon came and destroyed it, burnt it. And so the, you cannot rely on the temple of the Lord if the Lord is not in sight. That's what he's saying. Now look at this. In Matthew 23, 38 says, Behold your house. It's no longer the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. He says, this is now your house. This is another temple. The, the temple I just mentioned in Jeremiah was the temple of Solomon that he built. That was burnt to the ground. Now here's another temple that's been built by Herod. This is your house. It's left unto you desolate. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Until the time when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So the, the same thing's about to happen here. They're so proud of their building that they just rejected the owner of the building, the one that belongs to, to whom that building belongs, God. Look, we were here on Sunday, the first day of the week, when he came in and there was Palm Sunday. Palms, we remember we looked at that, that means righteousness. The king of righteousness came into the city. You cannot have Jerusalem or peace, city of peace. You cannot have that without Melchizedek, king of righteousness. This is the king of righteousness that came into the city, right, on a donkey. He came in and he shut the, he, all he did was came in and he looked around the temple and he left. Now on the second day, that's on Monday, he comes in and remember he cursed the, the fig tree. That was a sign of what he was going to do because they were selling uh, um, merchandise in the temple and so he came and cursed the fig tree on the way to Jerusalem and he did that strange work that he did he stopped the sacrifices that's strange he stopped the sacrifices and for that he got in trouble so the following day when he comes back the third day the, they're waiting for him they says who gave you this authority and then he tells us through that parable of the, of, the, of the vineyard, he says, I am the rightful owner of the vineyard. That's what he's telling them. And then he tells them the coin symbolizes when they brought a coin to him, give that which belongs to God, the image of God, the image of man belongs to God, return that to him. And he tells them, I am the king. Remember, he says, who do, when he asked the question, David in the psalm said, when he told my Lord, my Lord told, the Lord told my Lord, sit thou at the right hand until I make thy enemies thy, at thy footstool. That was saying, he was saying, I am the king. I am the one on the right hand of the throne. That's me. So now we continue. <clears throat> We're now, I believe this is about Tuesday afternoon, folks. Okay, so now we continue the story. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, he's crossed over. Over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? He says, walk across the Kidron Valley, now back to the, remember, he always goes back to the Mount of Olives. But it says they're over against, this, oppos this is opposition. He's against, he's already Cursed the fig tree. He's already stopped the sacrificial uh, um, sacrifices in the temple. And now he's going to pronounce what's going to happen to the city. And they say, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Now, we're all like that. We're all curious. We all want to know when. And that can get us into trouble. Um... Now, he's come back to the Mount of Olives, and they sent this delegation, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. These are the ones that are closest to him, because, you know, he's left, and they're wondering, why is he so hard on Jerusalem? And so they sent these people that are closest to him, and they, this is called, by the way, the Olivet Discourse. This is what you'll know uh, throughout, when you listen to people speak, or, or, or teachers, or, or uh, uh, preachers, 
they often refer to this. This is the talk he gave at this time. And what he says, what's going to come up on Jerusalem. When? What? When? These are the questions we often ask. We want to know. We're looking for constantly. You know, I myself, I'm a study of Israel. I always look at Israel. I'm always checking on what Israel. To me, Israel is very important because it, how Israel goes, it's a sign of the end times. You know, we've been told uh, Israel is very important. So look what Jesus says. Jesus answering Jesus answer them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. This is what, now when we get curious, when we want to know things, we open ourselves to possibly being deceived because we want to know things and, this, and he told us, he says, I want to warn you because you want to know and we are, we're all like that. We're curious, we want to know. So he says, this is what's going to happen. Many shall come in my name and many shall be deceived. Look at this. He, when he left, when the Lord left, he left from Mount, the Mount of Olives. That was the last place they saw him. Remember, there came a cloud and picked him up, and he went to home. We went to heaven. Now, when he comes again, he's coming to the, the exact same place. He's coming back to the Mount of Olives. So he's telling them, he says, between here and then. Now, if you stand on the Mount of Olives, and if he was going to tell you, I'm going to come back to this place at a certain point. But there's a big stretch of time, folks, between there, here and there. Um, and that's the, the quandary. When is he coming back? See, and he tells us, you, there's going to be all these false teachers, all these false Christs, all these false prophets. That's one of the things that we're constantly told. We need to, and I, when I talk, talk to people, I tell them, do you read the Bible? You need to read the Bible. Don't let anybody, and don't let others explain the Bible to you. Read it for yourself because you need to know what the Bible says because you can be deceived. You know, people, and there are, pe there are there people, and this is one of the reasons I like to teach with the Bible verses. One by, people have told me that. Why do you go through every single verse? It says, because <laughs> it's not my writing. You can see what is written. I didn't make this stuff up. Maybe there it is. I'm just saying, there it is, you know. <laughs> you know, all I do is read it. Um, but look, at his coming, he's coming back to the Mount of Olives. The king is returning, so he's warning us, be careful that you don't get deceived. And you know what, folks? People have been deceived throughout time. You hear, I don't know, if you were here in 1988, 1989, there was a man that was saying he's coming back then. And a lot of people sell their businesses and sell their homes and buy sheets or something, go up on the hill to wait for them. I says, oh, bad mistake, you know? And even I remember when, when we, we came upon the 2000, uh, the year 2000, there were people asking me, what does this mean? This is 2000. That's what it means, you know? Or oh, the computer's shutting down? Because everybody was worrying about the computers. They're all shutting down. I says, you should have had a Mac. The Mac doesn't have that problem. <laughs> the Mac doesn't have that problem. I says, all the PCs do, possibly, but they didn't, you know? But everybody gets, they, I says, that opens you up for being deceived. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. So he's telling us, these things, now Mark is talking about all that period of time. Not like Matthew, the next book we're going to study after Exodus. Matthew is very specific because Matthew is written to the Jew. But Mark says he's covering all this. We're going to have to divide it up ourselves because there's sections, and I'll show you. Wars and rumors of war will be throughout this time, and we know that when we look at history, there's been wars, you know. Many wars, and they'll continue to be wars. I mean, you can worry yourself to death, you know. For, be not troubled, for such, such things must needs be. These are going to happen. Earthquakes and famines and troubles. And you can study how, I don't know whether there's possibly an intensifying of the occurrence of earthquakes, possibly. 
but more earthquakes. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but they can cause more devastation because they're a bigger population in the world now. So whenever they strike a city, more people die. Um, but there, there are these things that are going on right now. These are the beginning of sorrows. He says, once, once the Lord leaves, this is what's going to happen throughout this time. So he tells us that. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. He says, take, take heed to yourself. It's you, you. I'm, he's referring to, to them, to the disciples. He's telling them. They will be brought before kings and rulers. That means that once that happens, the nation has been warned. Once you're brought before a king and a ruler, then that nation has already been testified against you. That's what that means. And that it's began with Paul and those people that once it, and it's still happening right now, folks. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. So he tells us before he comes back, every nation is going to get a chance at the gospel. So that's going to happen. Because they want to know when he's going to come back. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But who, whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it shall not... For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So he gives us, this is amazing. And you can see when you study this, the life of Luther, how in 1521, before the Diet of Worms, he stood before the council and he said, I stand here and I can do no other. So help me God. How did, I mean, those words continually resound throughout history, what he said. The Pope was there and he he, didn't, he did not recant. So who gave him those words? I believe it was the Lord who gave him those words. And, and throughout time, you have, you've had martyrs that at their death spoke like that. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So that's a comfort. He's telling them, you're not going to be alone. Now the brother shall betray the brother, the brother to death, and the father, the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure to the, unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now this is kind of tricky there, because it almost sounds like you're going to have to save yourself. But that's not really what it's saying. Your, your faith is going to be tested throughout this time. And some, the Lord chooses those who will be tested. And that's what that means, um, unto death. But he that shall endure unto the end, that means unto the end of your life. That's what that means. Not the end of this time, but the end of your life. If you can endure unto death, how many people have stood? And we know those are the martyrs. God and God selects them. And he says, he sh um, the same, that means whoever does that, whoever endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. That, that means that that's a sign that he has real life. And by the way, so here, look at this. I think of this girl, the teenage girl, Rachel Scott. She will forever go down in history. When I heard what she did, I thought, this is amazing. This little girl, at the, at the, when the murderers at Columbine High School came in, and they asked her, recant. And she says, I will not. And they shot her dead. And wow, she is now in heaven. And I, I often wonder, when I heard that story, I says, would I be able to do that? And the Lord was there with her. I mean, the Holy Ghost was there when she said, no, why would I recant the Lord? Jesus, he's my Lord. And they shot her dead. So that's, that's, going, that's going to be going on throughout this time. In the United States, we have it so well that you don't get persecuted highly. I mean, you don't. I mean, the very little things, you know, like you won't get invited to parties, that sort of thing. But we're not being persecuted like in other countries, like in Syria or Iran or other places as well. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by that 
by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. See, they're looking for signs, and he says, so here's a sign. Now, the time, this time is divided, folks. It's divided into sections. Look at this. We know that there's a period here of Israel. Although Israel is left in the Old Testament, but even here, there's a small time, a, a small section because the Lord, and then there's the section of the church. That's us. We are a mystery. That's, the Paul, that's what the prophets didn't foresee, and this is what Israel didn't foresee. They didn't see this thing. This is, we're a mystery. Um, and then, because look, he says, he, it really begins, the, mist, the church began when Jesus died, and he's about to die. He, this is Tuesday, he's telling them, Tuesday evening. But the Lord has already stopped the sacrifices. The temple has already ceased to do its work anymore because he's already stopped the sacrifices. But it's going to continue. The temple will continue for 38 more years. Now, Israel, look at this. Israel, the temple will continue for about 38 more years and it'll be destroyed. We don't know how long the church era is until the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we don't know. It's been 20, it's been 2017, 2017 years that the church has been going on. But folks, we're getting pretty close. I know everybody keeps saying that, but I really think we're pretty close. And then there will be seven years left for Israel to accomplish what, for, for what they did. They're going to pay for that. And anybody that's here when Israel has to pay for what they did is going to be is going to get into that tribulation. It's a hard time coming. And so we're told this. Uh, so Israel was, I mean, the temple was destroyed. And see, it makes sense, folks, that when the temple is destroyed or the, or, or, or the sacrifices are stopped, then begins another temple. And that's us. We are the temple. We are the body of Christ. We are the temple of God. So it begins at that point. When the church, when the, when the, temp, the old temple is done away with. When you shall see the abomination of desolation, what is that? Well, we're told, uh, standing where it ought not. So this is a sign for them. It, look, look what that 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Wait a minute, I thought the temple was destroyed. It was. But there's another temple coming up. There's another temple going to be built. But when that temple is built, that means that we need to be out of here, because we're the temple of God now but it's an invisible temple. You go to Jerusalem, the temple's not there. They have that, the dome of the rock over there, the mosque, the mosque, Muslim mosque there. But their temple has to be rebuilt. So that's coming. Then let them that be in Judea, this is the Jew, this is to the Jew. This is a sign for them. It's not for us, folks. This sign is not for us. He's going to give us another sign we should be looking at. Let them that readeth understand. Readeth what? Well, he tells us the things spoken by Daniel the prophet. So it's very important that we read the Daniel. Daniel gives you so much details. Oh, it's incredible. The book of Daniel has been attacked so much throughout history because they say it couldn't possibly have been written. It's got too much information. I mean, he talks about Cleopatra in there and Mark Anthony. You know, I mean, there's so much information in the book of Daniel that it couldn't possibly have been written back then, they say. Yes, it could have. God wrote it through Daniel, you know? Um, so the, the abomination of desolation, that's going to be a sign to them. When you see that happening, when is it going to happen? When they build the temple, the church will have disappeared by then, folks. You know, and this gets, that gets us into this little thing. And we, by the way, this church is premillennial, pre-trib. 
uh, Brother Bess is pre-trip, and I'm pre-trip. But you could be pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip. And what that means is you believe uh, that he will come after the tribulation and the church will go through the tribulation, or that in the middle of the tribulation we'll be taken out. But I believe that we'll be taken out before the tribulation. Now, it's up to you. What do you want to believe? There it is. I just put it there. Um, this is a sign. When they see the desolation, that abomination, when that man sits in the place of God, that's when, that's in the mid of the seven years. In the mid of the seven years, it's going to be hellish here on earth. You do not want to be here. And if you're a Christian, you won't be. Okay? Now, and let them that, and let him that is on the house top not go down into the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out of the house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to, to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. It's going to be a hard time. Those seven years are a hard time. And, and it's going to be, those days are pretty rough. Okay? I pray ye, and pray ye that your flight be not in winter, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. I can, I've, I've known, I've read stories about what, how World War I was and famines that caused great devastation throughout the world. But this says it's never been like this. It's going to be really rough. Can you imagine trying to buy a... I mean, you can get pictures like what's going on in Venezuela right now where prices for a loaf of bread are very high and gasoline is very high. Because, but that's, that's, that's that social experiment they, they're going through right now. But when the whole world is like that, that you're, you know, you're going to have to take a number. Um, and that's what they do. You can only water, like when we go into uh, drought restrictions here, you're told you can only water on certain days. But this is uh, Jacob's trouble, the tribulation or persecution that is coming. Now, we, over, we already know, like I was talking with Brother Adam about this chip. Some, uh, another a company here in the United States is always already doing this. They're implanting chips in their employees. We're pretty close, folks. We're pretty close to this thing. And, it's, and it makes sense, you know, they t they'll tell you, this is how they'll sell it to you. Y you won't have to worry about ever getting uh, um, somebody picking up your, your, your ID, you know, because it's going to be you. You're going to be there, unless they cut your hand off, of course, and take it with them. But, you know, that's the way they're going to sell it, and it's going to be, and it's going to sound like a great deal. It won't hurt, but nothing, you know, we'll put a little injection there, and, and we'll insert it and there, you'll be saved. You won't need credit cards or nothing. Wow, that'll make a lot of sense. A lot of people are going to be ready. So we're already being ready for that time, I believe. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened those days. And that's why three and a half years is going to be, that's what it's because before he comes back, when that begins, for and for the elect's sake whom he has chosen, that's Israel. It can't be the church because the church will not be here no more. So this is now Israel. See, and the church is already gone. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed. Behold, I have told you, foretold you all these things. So this is what he's telling them as they're asking him, when are the signs, when are these things going to happen? He says, uh, you know, folks, we live in a very humanistic culture, and it's getting more so. I don't know, you, you can't stop it. It's getting, it's becoming more polluted, more crazy. I mean, the entertainers from our, our land are getting so vulgar. And they do things and they show you things on regular, on, fa on family time television. They show you things that you would never have expected. Fa 50 years ago, folks, 
they wouldn't even show you, like in the Donna Reed show, um, that was a pretty popular show, they were husbands and wife, and you would never see them both together in one bed. Isn't that crazy? And whenever they got up, right, whenever they just got up in the morning, they were always wearing, wearing pajamas. You know, it, we're far gone from there. Oh, yeah. If they don't show some flesh, it's like that show won't make it. You know, it's all like that now. But in those days after the that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So there are signs for them. These are for that time when he's coming back. It will be pretty near. In those days after that tribulation, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. He's going to collect them wherever they be. And these are, the peop these are his people, the elect. I believe he's talking to the Jew because the church will not be here. And he'll come back, and you know that, that, that image of the man that will be set there at the temple, that began with Babylon. Remember the king? The king set up an image of gold, and Daniel and his three companions, well, Dan, not Daniel, but his three companions were told that they had to bow to the image. This is the time of the Gentiles, and it will close at this point. <clears throat> so all this time we're now in the we are now in the time of the Gentiles, and at this point when the Lord comes back, this is now moving back to Israel. Now this is the time of Israel. Israel will pay for what they did, and this is referred to as a day of atonement when they when they see the Lord and recognize him. That'll be uh, uh, that's why they'll cry because of what they've done. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So nobody knows when. See, when that, that fulfillment of the fullness of the Gentiles is going to come, we don't know when that's going to happen. But for us, the only people that study the Bible here on earth, we're going to disappear. And everybody else that's going to be left behind will not know this information that I'm giving you. I mean, possibly this uh, study will be left in the internet, or maybe somebody will take it down. <clears throat> but of that day and of that hour knoweth no man but the Father. He's the only one that knows when this is going to happen. And now the sign of that generation, Matthew tells us, Matthew tells us this. But now learn a parable of the fig tree. And we've already seen who the fig tree is. That's Israel. When his branch is yet tender and put, putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now look at this, folks. We know when he put his fourth leaves. And so we know the fig tree is Israel. When did it begin? 1948. That's when Israel became a nation again. Crazy, right? And they started putting leaves. They're growing over there like crazy. Every time you turn around, I mean, they're inventing all kinds of things. Israel, you go over there. When I went in 98, I, I, I went by the Dead Sea, and it was all barren. I went just there last year. They got groves and groves of dates. You know, they're growing all kinds of things in areas where the, that's, they, I mean, that's desert. You can't grow stuff there. They're, they're uh, taking water and watering that area. They're making it profitable. Uh, they're growing like crazy over there. Um, and they're coming up with all kinds of inventions. Now, for us, the church, we can. This is in our time. We can see that 
And especially if you recall the Six Day War in 1967, you'll be amazed at how could this little bitty nation, it would be like Bear County taking on Texas. That's crazy, that's suicidal. You know, we can't take Texas, Bear County is little. Well, this is Israel. Israel is little compared to Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Iran, Iraq, and all, all those people, the Sudan. I mean, and yet they took them, took them on and, and woke them, you know? It was God. I tell you, it was God that did that. And he's, they're putting forth leaves. No, even that the summer, that, it's, that it is near. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, what is, that question is, what is the generation? Okay? Look, 52 years from 1948 to, <clears throat> from, excuse me, from 1948 to 2000, that's 52 years. You had 17 years because we're now in 2017. What do you come up with? You come up with 69 years. The Bible says that three score and 10 is, is a life. That's what we're expected to live, 70 years. Is that a generation? I don't know. I'm just saying, that's what it looks like. We're pretty near. So look at how, the United States looks like it's doing well, but we're in such turmoil right now. It is crazy, folks. Overnight, this thing could cause us to worry, but the Bible tells us, don't worry. You know, these things must needs be. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. So we're supposed to be waiting for his coming back. And while we do that, we're supposed to be busy working, praying. And that porter here, I believe, are the pastors. I believe those are the pastors that of the local church, the shepherds. Those are the ones that are studying the Bible, the teachers. And they're the ones that should be telling people such things. Don't worry about those false prophets that are coming. Be about the business. Be doing what the Lord tells you to do. Watch and pray for his coming. Take ye heed. And this is, this is what this all been, this whole lesson. He tells them, you need to be, be watchful and take heed that you be not deceived. Okay? For you know not when the time is. Nobody can know. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at even, or at midnight, or at cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So that closes this lesson, folks. Okay? So we'll go into chapter 14 next day. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for what your wondrous word says. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray and give you all the glory. Amen.